I'm, my name is Bennett Jensen. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the director of legal at an organization called EGAL Canada. EGAL is a national uh, to SLGBTQ um, rights and advocacy organization that we're at a unique moment in terms of increasing threats to specifically trans and gender diverse people, but to SLGBTQ people in general. So, um, unfortunately, some um, of the some right wing politicians have and this has happened in the states, in the UK, and is happening in Canada have focused on creating this sense that there's some sort of epidemic of transness and that trans people represent a threat to children. About a year ago or 18 months ago, the government of New Brunswick decided to look at its um, inclusion policy again, so that's policy 713, and decided to make some changes. <clears throat> and those changes were, wound up being replicated in Saskatchewan. The, the leader of New Brunswick um, unfortunately relied on a lot of misinformation and uh, to, ar to argue that there was, as I said, some sort of epidemic happening in the schools where um, kids were being encouraged to, to transition. And so it decided that um, students would not be allowed to change their names or pronouns, again, just informally without parental consent. Unfortunately, we know that not all parents are supportive. And in a, a proportion of cases, um, it will never be safe for a student to come out to their parents as trans or gender diverse. We know that because trans kids are um, disproportionately represented among the uh, homeless population for youth. We have evidence about the levels of abuse, physical, verbal, etc., emotional, um, that happens for trans kids at home. So in those cases, the evidence also shows that having a single supportive adult while you're growing up is the, can be the difference between life and death. And I, I don't say that lightly. We're, the su rates of suicidality are, are very high in this population when they're denied support and affirmation. So if, what we're saying there is that the policies that are being pursued are making it so that teachers are not able to recognize the identity, humanity, dignity of their students and have to misgender them and dead name them, the language for using the wrong pronouns or using um, an old, the old name for the student um, and continuously harm them uh, until they graduate. So New Brunswick made those changes, then Saskatchewan followed suit. And we um, at EGAL, uh, with a private law firm and um, a local organization in Saskatchewan called You Are Pride, initiated a constitutional challenge and, tr and um, argued for an injunction to stop the policy while we argued in court that it violated the charter rights of gender diverse students. Unfortunately, then the Premier of Saskatchewan saw that and decided to use the notwithstanding clause and um, brought in legislation. Um, but I'll, I'll just take a moment to share what we know about the effect of these policies. Uh, these policies changed the lives of the young people in question virtually overnight for the worse. So without exception, all of these young people who came out at different moments, you know, their parents had different um, experiences of it coming to acceptance. All of them had been having typical childhoods. So some, and this policy has completely changed their lives in that bullying has gone way up. Their level of comfort in broader society has gone way down. The parents are experiencing more um, abuse in community. Teachers in these communities feel less able to acknowledge and recognize um, the individuals in their classroom to offer support. Um, and the, the mental health of these young kids has really, um, has really plummeted. And so it's had a devastating impact. And that brings me to Alberta, um, where similar changes but broader have been promised by the Premier. So what we expect there is, what she's committed to, is that um, there will be the, the similar pronoun policy in schools, but she's also going to be um, blocking access to what's called gender affirming care. So that's medical care given to some trans young people 
um, at the appropriate age. And there's just been a lot of misinformation there too. So our position is that the government should not be intervening in the medical decisions of any Canadians. We know historically that when that has happened, women and other people have been denied access to <clears throat> abortions, reproductive care. Um, this is a very slippery slope and it is not something for the government to be doing. But all of this comes together to create a society that is teaching a portion, a very small portion of already vulnerable young people that it is not safe to be who they are. It is also, um, we're in increasingly in a situation where governments are using mis and disinformation to mislead the population for political goals, where they are politicizing the lives of vulnerable members of our community, diverse members of commu our community. And so our goal is really to take down the temperature, to recognize that we are talking about young people here. We all should want just what's best for young people. We believe in a society where everyone should be able to be who they are. Um, and we think that institutions matter. We think that we should be listening to the experts. We should be equipping professionals and practitioners. Labor standing up against the use of the notwithstanding clause has historically been critically important and will